Yes. Otherwise? All right. So I will call the uh, Tuesday, February 14, 2023, Lunch and Learn meeting to order and ask Cole to take roll call, please. Blank. Here. Kyrie Montgomery. Here. Kroll. Here. McBurney. Here. Obra. Here. Excellent. All right. And is there a motion and a second to approve the agenda? So moved. Second. Okay. Roll call, please. I apologize, Mayor. I didn't catch fast enough who was who made the first and second there. Amy and then Larry. Okay. Yep. Amy made the motion. Larry second. Thank you. Uh, Kroll. Yes. McBurney. Yes. Blake. Yes. Harbury Montgomery. Yes. Obra. Yes. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Then item three is our regular agenda versus item 3.1 is to discuss the property maintenance code enforcement of tall weeds and grasses. AJ? Yes, Mr. Mayor, thank you, <laughs> Mem members of council. As you'll recall during our recent budget discussions, Steve brought to your attention that the Polk County Weed Commissioner was no longer going to respond to tall grass complaints in Polk County. They will still respond to uh, what they consider to be noxious weeds and going through the county and knocking them down based on complaints. But in the past, we have used them on our Polk County residents uh, to address uh, tall grass complaints that we've received on abandoned or unmaintained property. Again, as we explained during the budget process, that process now will be on our shoulders of how we would like to address that. Uh, Stephen and his staff have done some research. And at this point, Mr. Mayor, I'm gonna turn it over to Steve to give a net overview of what they've come up with and what their recommendations are for us moving forward in advance of the 2023 tall grass season. Steve? <laughs> yeah, and hopefully that's still several months away, but anyway. Uh, we started having conversations last year, just kind of how long it was taking and, and we weren't, none of us were satisfied, I think, with that particular process. Uh, so as you know, uh, when we would get a complaint, we would go out, we would do an inspection if it was warranted, which is per code an average of 12 inches tall uh, of grass and weeds, then we would send them a letter, we would give them a week to comply. If they didn't comply, we would send it to the weed commissioner. Weed commissioner would then follow up with a letter of their own uh, and then I think about a week after that, they would stick it on their list. And depending on how long their list was, it would be weeks before they could get out there. Uh, and then as AJ mentioned, we've been informed now that Polk County Weed Commissioner will only take care of noxious weeds. And so that gives us the opportunity to take care of it in-house, which frankly, most other cities are doing at this point anyway. So only a couple of things really that I just need some direction from you guys on how you would want to do it. Um, we checked with both West Des Moines and Waukee. Those are two models that are, they basically function the same. The really the only difference is, is in the administrative fee that they charge and the time period with which they give people to be compliant. Um, West Des Moines here, I'm going to share my screen here. I can show you the form that, that West Des Moines uses. Um, you all seeing that? Okay. Violation notice there. So. Waukee uh, does the inspection. They provide something similar to this on the property. They do not follow up with mail uh, and they give them 24 hours to mow. And if it's not done, they turn it over to a mowing contractor and then they assess a fee. In addition to the mowing fee, they assess an administrative cost of $45. West Des Moines, which you're seeing here, this is what they leave. They tag both the property and follow up with a mailing. And you can see here, they give them 72 hours to be able to comply. And if they don't comply, uh, then they turn it over to their contractor to be able to get it mowed. So Scott Hoke with Parks has checked with our contractor. We, you know, what's the number going to be? We don't think we're going to have that many of these. Our best guess is maybe five to seven a year. We'll see. 
Um, but they indicated, Scott, correct me if I'm wrong, but they could do it for 150 bucks a pop, right? When we called them. Um, so, you know, 12 inches is what we've always used. So I would recommend we keep that the same. Our practice has always been giving people seven days to comply. I would recommend to you that we keep that the same because that's what we've been doing. You want to make it shorter? We certainly can do that. Uh, and then Scott and I talked a little bit yesterday. We believe then once it's not done within the time period that we give them, we can alert the contractor. And the contractor, depending on – they they come from Pleasant Hill, and so they're coming here on a particular day of the week, Scott. Is that right? So it could be as much as a week before they could get it, but it won't be longer than that. Is that what we're thinking? They're usually here at the first part of the week. So if yeah. we get notice to them on Tuesday, we, it might be till next week. Sunday or Monday until they get it. Right. So, but the point is, it wouldn't be weeks and weeks as the weed commissioner was. Shouldn't be any more than a week. We could get in there and hit it. So, what could take as long as four, six, eight weeks, hopefully, we could bring that process down to a two week process. So, the main things I guess I need your input on are how long do we want to give people to comply before we would turn it over to our contractor to do it? Uh, And then, what kind of administrative fee would you want to? Um, to have in addition to the $150 to be able to mow the property. And again, Waukee, just as two examples, they're $45 and West Des Moines is $100. The last thing I would mention, just as far as our property maintenance code itself, Bob Leiden and I have both looked at that. We're convinced that the language that is currently in the code is appropriate. It gives the city the ability to be able to remedy remedy the situation and assess fees which is what we're doing. We would just be changing the process, but we don't think there's anything in the current code that would need to change. It's just a different process about how we do it. So as an overview, that's it. What questions do you have and what are you thinking in terms of how long to comply and what kind of administrative fee would we want to do on top of the mowing cost? How much does the weed commissioner charge them to mow? They were charging $171 an hour. And do we run into any issue if it's, 12 inches plus, you know, if it's rained or whatever the case is, um, do we get to a point where the weeds get too tall to be adequately mowed? I wouldn't think so, Scott. I don't know if you have any input on that or not, but with the equipment that they have, whether it's 12 or 14, you know, ideally we're going to hit it pretty quick once it would get to 12. I wouldn't think that would cause a problem. What are your thoughts? Yeah, they're going to be able to get through most anything with the equipment that they have. Um, the one caveat is it's it's the 150 um, to show up. If it takes them longer than an hour to do, they will charge charge them by the hour. So if it's a huge property, I know we're not talking about commercial property here, but if it's right. a huge property um, and it takes them another hour to do it, there'd be another $75 on yeah, top of the 150. It could so be more. Mm-hmm. And most of these properties are going to be small enough, again, with the equipment they have, even if it's a front and rear yard, they're going to be able to do it in an hour. But there might be those rare situations where it would be more. And same thing with the weed commissioner. It was 171 an hour. Those could There could be those, uh, you know, some cases where it took more than that. Just as a reminder, both for Steve and for, uh, for Scott, when we go out and with the weed commissioner, what we are going to be doing if, at, with your approval council this isn't going to be graph, golf course grass mowing. This is knock the tall grass down. And so I don't know if we'll get any feedback from neighbors that give the complaint that there's grass to be cut. And then our folks go in and just knock it down. So it's just one of those kind of caveats I always like to, to share is that when, when we have to get involved, when they're non-compliant, then our goal is just to knock it down. Yep. And I guess last thing I can think to mention, uh, the other cities, and I would recommend we do the same thing. We give them 30 days to pay, and if they don't, then we go through the process with the county. That's pretty standard. I guess for me, it, the timeline seems still a little long. So if we're saying seven days from when we notice it, and then potentially another seven days before the contractor gets to it, um, I think that that timeline might be a little little long. So if we maybe even back it off to maybe a a five day, I don't know. Uh, And I do like the idea of putting the notice on the property as well as mailing. Uh, So that process I do like of over-inform 
that, th- those were Bob fe- Bob's feelings as well. You know, give everybody every effort to comply and make them aware of it. Yeah. Right. Because then we know we've physically dropped something at the property. Um, can't always say postal service unless we send it certified mail is going to guarantee delivery date. So, right. um, yeah, just my thoughts on it. Of once, once the city is notified, getting it done within the two weeks would be kind of nice instead of it potentially dragging beyond two weeks. And does that five days or seven days start from the moment that the notice goes on the door or does that, like, when does that start? That would be the way I would recommend we do it. And that is how both Waukee and West Des Moines do it. Yeah. Because they're, the the notice on the property is the primary notice that they're giving. And then they, well, Waukee doesn't mail, West Des Moines does. I agree. I, I'd prefer to see a shorter amount of time frame. Um, the five days seems plenty. They're not going to do it in five days. They're probably not going to do it in seven. So um, <laughs> you could make that argument. I think yes. Yeah, seems adequate. What was what was West Des Moines? I thought it was seventy-two hours from the time that they posted it. Correct. West Des Moines is three days. And then he said Waukee was twenty-four hours. Waukee is twenty-four hours. Yeah. Right. I was I was I was honestly leaning more towards the seventy two hours because typically speaking, a person is not gonna call in and complain until probably a week and a half, two weeks since the last time it's been mowed and even then it may not even meet the definition. Uh, I think by the time we get to it, seventy two hours has been more than long enough for somebody to go out and take care of it. The only thing I can think of is if people are out of town. For like a long weekend. But is a long weekend going to be? I mean, given how long grass grows, I, I guess I. It I'd would have been longer stair, than that. I'd stair step it since we've done seven days. I think five days is probably the next. Like we're still shortening it, but we're not cutting them off at the knees either. And we can certainly go back and adjust it later. You know, we can we can start with whatever time period you want now and just kind of monitor it for a year and, and see how it's working. I'll say I'm I'm kind of Larry's, but I'd be fine with three. I mean, you got to handle your business. Even if you're out of town, call a friend, call a neighbor, do something. If or pay the fine and just have, have it, the city take care of it. Yeah, if, if you know about it. I mean, yeah. I keep thinking of the one that I called in um, when I was campaigning and the folks are at Cuddy's for a month at a time and didn't know, clearly didn't know um, (laughs) that it was out of control. I I have a hard time believing that, but. Yeah, I just think that if you're leaving for an extended period of time, that's one of the things that you're trying to take care of. Yeah, you should. Any other thoughts about time period? Bridget, you still with us? Did you want to weigh in on that? Okay, and we, w- and we will bring this back to you. We will make this a council agenda. We we will take some time to prepare the form that we would leave on the property so that you can see that. We'll bring it back to you and have this be an agenda item on a, on a future council before grass starts growing so you can formally approve this. But, okay, what are your thoughts on administrative fee to go with it? And and ideally, Bob, chime in here if you want to, but really we just want to, we want to charge what what it would cost us in staff time to be able to process this and go through the the process of getting it done. So you've got inspections involved, you've got preparing an invoice to be able to bill them, that kind of thing. So again, West Des Moines is $100, Waukee is $45. So, you know, if they get a bill and it's the typical $150 to mow, obviously by example, if our if our administrative fee was $100, they'd be getting a bill for 250 bucks with 30 days to pay it. I guess how much time do you anticipate spending on this? Not much, honestly. Um, you know, we just have to we have to go through the process of getting a mailing out to them saying, hey, you need to pay this and then follow up if they don't. So I don't think $100 is going to be out of the question or inappropriate, but. Anywhere else in our code that we have fees similar? Uh Uh 
not off the top of my head that I can think of because we don't get into a whole lot of assessment, at least in, in my department, to be able to do that type of thing. Um, Steve, I'm trying to think on snow removal. If we get a complaint on and that's the what I was just That's what I was just wondering about some engineering type issues, if what we do for those. We can certainly check that out for you. We just want to be consistent. I mean, snow removal, yeah. you know, the process of doing snow removal from a city standpoint, the process of mowing would be, I think, more of a ton. Mm -hmm. We can yeah, certainly do a little bit of investigation on that. When we bring it back to you, we could bring you that information and you could decide on the fee then. That's fine. Right. And it may be both fees are changed. So, yeah. Well, that's really it. I mean, it, it, it really is a, a pretty straightforward process. It's just a matter of, of what we want to use, how much time and how much of a fee we want to charge. So um, that pretty much gives me what I need to finalize some things and bring it back to you one more time to finalize it, unless you have any other questions. So I will just bring up something very quickly. It was popped up slightly last year. It was the No Mo May. And I know mm -hmm. this is a slightly adjacent, but it's kind of in the same vein. Um, you know, is that something we want to promote or deal with, or or do we give an exception for the month of May? Or like, I'm just kind of just throwing that out because I think it, it may have been a fad last year. We never have to deal with it again, but just bring it up that it did occur. My thought, subject to anything you guys want to do differently, is I thought we'd get this figured out, uh, finalize what our process timeline fees are going to be, and then I'd get with Derek and we would push this out to everybody. And as part of pushing that out. Hey, here's our process now for taking care, making sure we deal with tall grass. We could also point out in that communication that we don't honor no mo may, <laughs> unless you all want to. So, but you know, we had we had a handful of complaints last year. Uh, it didn't seem to be a real big thing in Urbandale, but it was certainly out there, and we did hear about it and had a handful of complaints about it. If they want to do the mullet no mo may, you know. <laughs> Cut in the back's not go for it, but yeah, I think we need to not have no more May across the city by any means. Yeah, and like I said, it's real easy to to get with Eric, and when we push out, hey, here's the new information about how we deal with tall grass. Have that be part of that communication too. That listen, that's that's not something you can do here. Um, can you guys hear me? This yes, is Bridget. Okay, yep. I'm using my ear pods or whatever. I'm at school. Um, I guess. Um, I'm kind of a, I, I, we at least mulleted uh, no mo may last year uh, at our house, uh, you know, business in the front, party in the back. Um, I don't know if in our communications I want to um, even acknowledge no mo may because I think it goes uh, against what many of us are trying to uh, pursue. Uh, in terms of supporting our ecological systems in our community. So um, I would say I'd feel more comfortable if when pushing this out, we don't even mention it. Um, and, uh, you know, people can take no mo may however they want to interpret it. If they get, you know, 10 inches, then, then cool. If it gets higher, then we'll deal with it. But um, you know, as well, we, we don't have to promote no mo may as a city, but um, if people want to do it on their own, I don't want us to say don't do it. As long as it's not an issue. I mean, and if it becomes yeah. an issue, we put a notice on their door and hopefully they mow. I was going to say, if we don't even mention it, if we notice it being a problem, you know, they're going to get notified once they hit that criteria. So. All right. I'm fine with that. Yeah. Though it did did make me, I like the idea of not having to mow for a month and then, <laughs> and, oh, I'm helping the environment. Um, but it's. Uh, Let's be fair. Your time's going to be tied up in May. That's that's really. <laughs> I'll have lots of time just to try to escape the house during the day. <laughs> so. Yeah. Okay. Well, I have what all I right. need, unless you all have other questions uh, or comments, and we'll look at probably sometime here, maybe the second meeting in March, to bring this back to you formally to approve our process and get ready for grass to grow. All right. Very good. Thank you all very much. All right. Thanks, Steve. All right. Uh, then item 3.2 is to discuss the noise ordinance. 
Yes, Mr. Mayor, members of council, uh, several weeks ago, you had a visitor at a council meeting who expressed some concerns about a neighbor and the wind chime that the neighbor had at their home and the disruption that it caused her and her family. Um, if I remember correctly, she did say that the neighbor did comply with uh, silencing the wind chime when she requested, but uh, beyond that, <clears throat> pardon me, she requested that the council do uh, consider one of two things. Number one, consider uh, declaring that wind chimes are a musical instrument and that therefore fall under our current code with noise abatement related issues, or if that was not acceptable, then to move to a point where we would include wind chimes in our current ordinance, which then allows the police department who responds to neighborhood type complaints the authority to go and to address this issue uh, when it's brought to their attention. Um, I've discussed this with the city attorney and yesterday in late afternoon, I shared with all of you his um, opinion about the wind chimes and that in his opinion, they do not qualify or uh, qualify as a musical instrument. Uh, but of course, Bob is online right now and he can certainly address it himself. So um, I would let him do that and then uh, you can proceed with your discussions about how you wish to address this resident's concern uh, dealing with uh, this noise related issue. So Bob, I'll turn it over to you. Thank you, AJ. Uh, Mr. Mayor, members of the council, uh, I did look at the video when Ms. Loggy appeared, so I, I reviewed the video. Uh, I should add on the screen also is Jake Firehelm. Jake is our prosecutor that would handle any of these type complaints. And I've talked to Jake on a new, uh, number of occasions. And then I've talked to the police chief too. And with the way I read uh, 96.04 sub F, you can't just take musical instrument by itself. You ha it says the sound made by a drum, horn, reed instrument, string instrument, or other musical instrument. And all of the prior in references require somebody make that sound, uh, not just the wind. So I I would disagree with Ms. Loggy in her interpretation. Mm -hmm. I think also um, you're gonna get other folks that go down this path such as spinners that are yard, um, you know, ornaments if you will, people hang other stuff. This. We have not had a complaint in my years in Urbandale for what it's worth on um, you know, uh, instruments hanging outside uh, uh, somebody's window or door. Normally how we would handle this is we'd contact the neighbors. We'd like to see if the neighbors would take the wind chimes down or be considerate. I do know in this particular case, the wind chimes are down and I believe that this is more than just the wind chime issue with these folks. I think it's probably a little deeper than that. One of the things I talked to AJ about, quite frankly, and I, I, I have not followed up on this as neighborhood, we used to do neighborhood mediation. I mean, like a criminal matter. And Jake Firehelm, Jake can address it because he deals with this stuff way more than I, I do, but we used to have a neighborhood mediation and I know the county attorney's office used to send folks there. And remember, we would have to prove this beyond a reasonable doubt at the courthouse. And I would just ask Jake just to jump in just briefly, what would be the problems, if any, in proving this case if we were to file something on this? Jake, could you just address that briefly for the council? Sure. Can everybody hear me okay? Yes. Okay. Um, I, I watched the video from the council meeting where this young lady spoke also. Um, I spent some time uh, this past week. Uh, if you took the time to Google wind chime complaints, it is across the nation. Uh, it's a common problem in cities and towns. And I printed off... Uh, this happens to be the noise ordinance for the city of Henderson, Nevada. Uh, very technical. Uh, it requires the use of uh, 
uh, sound level, level meters or no, noise decimeters. Uh, there's specific requirements of how far away from the noise generator that the, that the person uh, measuring that has to be, whether it's the lot line and so forth. So I think that, I don't think that this is a musical instrument. I, in none of my research did they characterize the wind chime as a musical instrument. Um, my concern of, of, as Bob said, proving a case beyond a reasonable doubt is who gets to decide what's too loud? I mean, each officer responding to a complaint, uh, to one officer it might be too loud, to the next one not too loud. Um, I just think it would be a prosecution nightmare to try to come up with a plausible proof beyond a reasonable doubt scenario. Um, I think if, if you if you tried to do something like this, it would almost have to go like like this city of Henderson, Nevada, where you get into uh, band ranges and, and meters and so forth. And it, it seems to me a, a very complex situation. It's interesting that Bob mentioned the neighborhood mediation. Um, I've been dealing with, with criminal cases for in Polk County since 1985, and the Polk County Attorney's Office, I'm not sure what year, came up with the VORP program, V-O-R-P, Victim Offender Reparations Program. And I, I don't know if they handle uh, anything outside of where criminal charges are actually filed, but um, they, they do a lot of mediations. If the victim of a, of a crime wants to mediate with the offender, the courts make them do that. Uh, it's done with a professional in charge. They don't just stick them in a room and let them yell at each other. Um, and it, it's proven to be very effective in settling sometimes a, a lot line problem or your cat is coming over in my yard or things like that. So that that sounds interesting to me. So that's my two cents. And I would add, I did the same like Jake did. I've got lots of information on wind chimes, way more than I knew uh, going into this. And uh, I've looked at ordinances. Years and years ago, we had discussion in front of a council about a decimeter to measure it. And at that time, and I don't know if Bob, Mayor Bob remembers this, but the council really didn't want to get involved so much in that. You got to have training for that. It takes police time. You got to have a police officer generally down there, and is it the same officer? It causes some other stuff, and certainly Chief Johansson can uh, step in here too. But the council at that time said, we don't think we want to do that. I don't recall what the cost was, but it does take some training, and you need a, a down. And uh, if the chief has any additional comments, and I'd be more than happy to answer any questions. But again, I do not believe this is a violation of our current ordinance. So currently, our sound ordinance is in effect from 10 p.m., 9 p.m.? It's, it's actually 9 p.m. to 6.30. And uh, Amy, our ordinance is the same as Clive slash Johnston. Uh, Clive has like 10 p.m. to 7 a.m. Johnston, you know, it's just a matter of of when we're 9 p.m. to 6.30 a.m. And so if we were to classify wind chimes as a musical instrument, which I would argue they are, um, but that doesn't really matter at this point. I mean, essentially we're saying from 9 p.m. to 6.30 a.m., secure your chimes, which I don't think is unreasonable. Um, I am a gardener. I have chosen not to ever put wind chimes out because I can't sleep with them. So I can only imagine if you're living next to someone who has them outside your window, how ungodly annoying that would be. And if there is already a rift there, um, it would be a very easy way for someone to intentionally annoy and be obnoxious. With that being said, you know, we haven't had ongoing issues, so this very well could be a one-off, but it at least gives some 
meaningful way to be able to say, hey, look, you can't do this. Like, stop being a jerk. Um, without it being something that is likely going to blow up into a huge ordeal for the city. I guess my perspective is we need to do something um, to give some level of credence that you can't just let chimes go all night either. I guess my struggle has been how do we consistently apply whatever we say across all situations and so um, knowing that we don't have a decibel meter we don't have the training um, I don't know how you know this time since winds chimes the next time it might be a water fountain the next time it might be a bird cage hanging outside the window too long that's the part I'm struggling with of you know I think the neighborhood mediation is maybe more effective um, because we're talking one case in our four years. Bob, you haven't thought of a case in your X many years. Um, I think we just have two neighbors that are not getting along uh, at this point. And so I don't, mediation might be our best solution for this versus trying to apply a whole new standard across the city. I, I even thought about, uh, you know, these spinners, some people put spinners in the yard as a lawn ornament. Um, I could see folks hanging other stuff, you know, uh, and it is difficult to apply this across the board. Um, and again, I mentioned uh, neighborhood mediation. I can't remember who I mentioned it to, and I don't know if it's a real viable option, but I would certainly want to explore it uh to help these folks out because i think this is a little deeper than just the wind chimes i think there's and she and miss loggy alluded to that in the email she sent that i mean it's far the council record has to do with other things i think i guess my ar argument is if if you've got something that's annoying your neighbor and you know about it and it's making sound and it's past nine o'clock I mean, a common sense would say take it down or secure it, but if if that's not working, and it sounds like this was an ongoing issue, calling multiple times, I don't know. I think there needs to be a little bit more teeth in it. I'm curious what others think, though. Real quickly, if I may, I know Rob is on the line too, but and Rob, please correct me. I know Bob alluded to it as well. Um, when we respond to neighborhood related issues, we seek compliance. You know, we'll we'll address where the issues or our problems are, ask for them to be in compliance with either an ordinance or you know disturbing their neighbors, and, and that's our usually that's our first line. And then if we have to come back, uh, if you had changes in your ordinance that allowed it gives the officers at least some mechanism by which they can ultimately take an action to, to write a citation, again, if it, if it passes all the muster that the city attorney talked to. Rob, am I off base there too much? No, and that's, can everybody hear me? That's assuming, yeah. So, you're right, our ordinance does not have a decibel reading and all of that in it, um, which thank you, thank you so much for that, because <laughs> these are difficult enough to deal with. We have to go out there and start measuring sound and, and all that, because we get compliance 99.9% .9 of the time. We go out and tell people, knock it off, you know, be considerate, um, do whatever. Um, yeah, so most of the time we get compliance. Um, Really, for, for our perspective from the police department, what I've, I've shared with uh, the city attorney is, we just want to know the direction you want us to go, right? So um, do you want us, because what happened in this particular case is you had different officers showing up and basically interpreting our noise ordinance saying, I don't think it applies. So that's what we're looking for is uh, what your interpretation of it is. Yeah, we would love to see that 
the wind chime gets moved to the other side of the house or a, a little bit further away from the window as part of this mediation and it works out. I will add that Polk County still does offer neighborhood mediation. Um, we do refer people to that when we have neighbor disputes like this as part of the restorative justice down there. It's, it's not very often that people will take that up. Um, uh, it's just the society we live in. They're just, they're not, people don't like to go down and sit across the table from each other, but it really is effective. I mean, when you have to sit across the table from somebody and, and explain your actions and, or justify what you're doing or, or see the other person's side of it. And there's that personal connection. I think it helps a lot. So um, I would hope maybe we could get through this. I'm kind of a that as well. Maybe we can get through this issue with this, these two particular parties um, and work out an agreement where we don't have to apply a whole new ordinance or something else citywide uh, as was stated before by Councilman Holbrook. So that's what I would like to see. But again, it, it's just whatever you guys want us to do, that's what we'll do. Um, we're here to, to do what you guys want as far as the noise ordinance goes. I guess I would tend to not want to have to amend our ordinance to do this, or and, you know, I, I would think there's there are other avenues that can be taken short of this, and um, that would be my my preference in looking at this and, and hearing. You know, th this goes from a 18 plus years, 20 years of hearing different types of complaints on different things from citizens, and we're we're what's the next one that we're going to have? I think I think. Dialogue and discussion and mediation are the much better course to take in something like this. I'll say that um, my perspective, the and this and I, I come from a position that we put up a wind chime in my house for a day, it kept me up. We don't have wind chime anymore, so I am a I am very acutely aware of individuals that have this type of impact, but also coming, I'm trying to rack my brain as somebody that. It, like literally for a living drafts legislation and tries to implement laws. Um, I'm trying to think through uh, how you would do it, it's just putting wind chimes, but then you have to define all wind chimes have to be down at a certain time, but then you define what is a wind chime and then you would have an argument over what, what are, what is a wind chime and what isn't a wind chime. Um, the other part, the other part in my head was like uh, any sound that inflicts your ability to have in, uh, enjoyment and property of uh, enjoyment of your land and property, but then you would have to define what that is, and you would have to argue what is, how is this a conflict? And so, I'm actually I I initially was coming in here thinking let's just get rid of those things, those suckers keep me awake, but after kind of looking at the analysis and thinking through it a little bit, I str I also struggle with how you would effectively put that into code. Um, and so I've, I'm leaning towards we should, if, we, if, if there's some way for us to opt into the mediation system and, uh, you know, do that, uh, I'm, I'm more towards that now. Isn't there a way that, I mean, if it's bothering your neighbor and it's after 9 o'clock, <laughs> like, you need to secure it? Is, but that the, to me seems simple. <laughs> I don't know. But it's an it's a you're right. But it's a subjective term. It's a subjective term, and then you would have to defend what is subjective to one person versus subjective to the other. Um, and it, it from a and the other attorneys on the on, on here, please chime in. Um, no pun intended. Uh, but uh, because I, I I'm just trying to think of the enforcement of it. Is, and I, yeah, exactly. Yeah, it can be very subjective, and it's, that's that's been the issue. I mean, yeah, I worry about the total amount of staff hours that we're going to end up putting into this, and then the precedent that it sets as far as if somebody has a disagreement with their neighbor, take it to the council, and the council is going to be the one that ultimately decides what what they're going to do going forward. And then you also have to take into consideration, like Matt was alluding to. Um, how do you define a wind chime? How do you uh, how do you classify if it's a, a wind chime for religious uses or cultural uses? It's just it, it gets it gets so sticky. I, I just I don't I don't personally like it. I 
I under, I empathize. Um, I, I wouldn't want to be in that position, but ultimately, I just don't think that we're the correct body to be setting that precedent. Yes, I don't see it as being as big of an issue. I mean, we have one situation. We've had one situation in 20 some years. This one particular situation has caused police to have to go back to the neighbor multiple times. Like, I would think they're in 99.9% .9 of the time, <laughs> knock it off works effectively. Um, but there has to be some way in which to say, this is why you need to knock it off. Um, I don't think it's going to come back and bite us long term. Um, in this particular instance or any other, I guess I, I'm still back to that we can define our own ordinance to include wind chimes. Um, but I, I understand if that's not legally allowed. I just I just think it's a pretty simple address it and move forward. I would add that to my knowledge, the person did take the wind chimes down, so they did knock it off. But I don't know if there was a plan or a, or a comment by this neighbor that said they were going to put them back up at a certain time that, yeah. that I'm aware, unaware of. But at least for now, the wind chimes are down. Yeah, the wind chimes are down, and the neighbor has made comment that they will be putting them back up. Could it, I'm just thinking through this. And I, I don't know whether this changes it or I'm just trying to get to like a middle ground. So, and I don't have the ordinance in front of me, but musical instrument or noise making device or something like that would, that could bring it in and then it, it might be a little bit more all encompassing and then they could get some teeth. Um, I'm just trying to think of a way to maybe round the circle or square the circle a little bit. Um, legal Bob, uh, well, I guess, okay, non mayor Bob, legal Bob, other legal Bob, uh, uh, would that be sufficient? And do, and from, and prosecutor, uh, Jake, uh, what are your thoughts on that? We are going to have, once, if that was the case, I suspicion we will have lots of folks complaining and it'll be difficult to prove down at the courthouse. You know, I mean, um, spinners, you know, could be hung. You could have a bird feeder that makes a bunch of noise. Uh, I think the police will be called out there. Uh, I told AJ, I said, uh, my home in Wisconsin, I could see people hanging bud cans out there, uh, bud light. Um, would not be unusual. Um, it's and the proof is the court's got to believe this is a violation. And was it a one-off? When did it occur? How long did it occur? What? Well, it's a proof problem. Quite frankly, um, I would like to at least have the council direct me to contact these folks, see if we could set up mediation, or we've even. The city in the past, when we had uh, soccer issues, as you know, we brought uh, EJ on, we brought other folks on just to see if we could solve this problem. And I'm more than willing to, you know, obviously take the lead on this if the council wants before we start amending the ordinance. But that's just my thoughts. I'll, we'll do whatever the council thinks. And I'd ask Jake to jump into uh, on a proof problem, if any. I agree with your your analysis, Bob, that there are proof problems. But I, I've been sitting here looking at 96.04 sub A. Um, it, it, it says any sound which endangers or in, injures the welfare, safety, health of a human being or disturbs a reasonable human being of normal sensitivities or causes or tends to cause an adverse psychological or physical effect on human beings. That's a pretty broadly worded statute. Um, and, and arguably, th this wind chime with these particular people, it kind of fits. Mm -hmm. But 
at least the second half of that would require, I think, some medical proof that the person has suffered an adverse effect and they're going to counseling or I don't know. But I, I think it's it's a slippery slope. Um, but I suppose, you know, arguably, if you, if you could get these people to mediate, you could tell the, the wind chime people, hey, you could be looking at a criminal offense here if, if you keep pushing it. I did talk to Miss Loggy about 96-4A, and I told her, I didn't go quite as much as Jake just did, but I told her she wouldn't need to come and testify. It wouldn't be the police officer. And she right. said, I'm more than willing to do that. Yeah, I'm sure she would be. And uh, I, I, I would offer this, this as a solution. Try to mediate. If it doesn't work, then tell tell the the person with the wind chime. Well, if you know if this continues, we're likely going to be citing you under a uh, section subsection a, and then then we tell uh, the the party that's complaining. I can't the name Miss Loggy. I think is what someone said that we will not be citing her unless you're going to willing to testify because. I'm not going to have a police officer going to be going down there and testifying that they thought it was uh, too noisy of a wind chime. Um, most of these noise ordinance complaints that we go on, if you're not willing to file a complaint on the barking dog, et cetera, we usually don't follow up with a citation. We make you go down there, and if it's bothering you, then you should be able to come down and testify. So then we go that route, and then if the judge decides that it's not a violation or he doesn't feel that it is, then she has her answer that it's not a violation according to the courts and we leave it at that going forward. I think that's fair. I'm fine with that recommendation. Would the council want me to reach out and see if we can get these folks to neighborhood mediation, at least pursue that? Yes. I don't know if it'll be successful. I think it's a worthwhile step. And then we have the teeth that's needed if she's willing to go through and, and testify, which I get every inclination that she would be willing to do. Folks, I got to jump off. I got some court coming up here soon. Thanks, Jake. Thanks, Jake. All right. Thank you, Jake. I think the other piece is she just wanted um, officers to be aware that that would be the policy as well, or the approach, I guess. It wouldn't necessarily be a policy change. Right, and that's, that's really what I'm on here for is direction from the council so I can inform everybody that's out there in patrol that potentially could get called to this. This is how we're gonna handle it. But again, I don't think we do anything different until we at least to go down the mediation path. Plus. The chimes are down right now, so we have time to get this mediation started and set up, hopefully, before the chimes go up, and then uh, we'll know an answer once uh, Bob reports back whether mediation was successful or didn't even go down, you know, no one was willing to do it or whatever. Then we then we go to that next step of, okay, officers, here's what you do if you respond to this particular incident, and we're going to cite, and we're going to be uh, putting the neighbor down as a witness, and uh, that's the way we'll go forward with it. Sounds good. Um, and Chief, I'll follow up with you if you've got the number and the name, uh, who to contact, or I can call county attorney's office. Yeah, I'll I'll, I'll have to pull the call and then uh, get it and see what we got for the the information there. But yeah, we should have that somewhere here. Okay, and you can send that to me, Chief, and then I'll call and see how they do it. And and council members, I'll just report back to AJ, and maybe in his newsletter or not his newsletter, his his Friday okay. communication to the council, if that's okay. Yeah, I'd be okay with that. Yep. Yep. Thanks, Bob. I've got a budgeting circulation, so it's uh, <laughs> news, newsletter may be a bit of a stretch. 
Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but no, I, I'd, I'd be happy to make the follow up with that too as well. All right. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. All right. Thanks, guys. All right. Well, Matt, is there anything else for the go of the order today? We're early. We're getting ready for snow, so we'll be prepared. <laughs> Absolutely. So, all right. Well, with nothing else, we're at the end of the agenda, so we stand adjourned. Have a good remainder of your day, everybody. All right. Thank, Thank you. Thanks, everyone.